horse's brain is very similar to the human brain. In fact, across all species, especially mammals, brain structure and function is pretty much the same. The major difference is in the front part of the brain. This part of our brain, just between our temples, the prefrontal cortex, which is in the frontal lobe of, the, of human beings, is really very unique. It's unique in terms of its cell structure and function because these cells are highly granular because they do a lot. They have very powerful nuclei that uh, enable our mental processes of reasoning to occur. And they're also very granular cells when you look at them under a microscope when they're stained. These cells in the human enable us to visualize ahead and to think back. Being able to think ahead and think back is a really important thing for human beings because in our own evolution, you know, we have an opposable thumb and fingers and therefore we had to learn to plan ahead. So when we pick up an object, we need to know what we're going to do with it. And so we seem, see some levels of that, in, our, of course, in other primates, but also other tool using animals. And even in elephants, we see that they can use their trunk to pick up objects to do certain things with. And you need planning abilities for that. And that involves thinking ahead. So the ability to think ahead and think back is really elaborated in the human being. But we shouldn't expect that all animals can do it because some animals with a different kind of lifestyle, such as grazing animals like horses, don't necessarily need the abilities to think ahead and think back as much as we do. This ability in humans is a three second ability and then we use our refreshing pathways of the prefrontal cortex to maintain the memory. And that's really what the prefrontal cortex is largely about. But for animals without that uh, prefrontal cortex, such as horses, where we, they don't have the same cell structure at all in the, uh, of those cells in the prefrontal cortex, then we have to assume that they are unable to do that because they just didn't need that in their evolution anyway. What they need to do is have a very powerful memory, so an excellent recognition memory. It's probably no different to an elephant's memory, and elephants are famous for having this incredible memory. I guess you could think about it from the point of view of the horse's evolution, that you know, if there were three lumps on the landscape yesterday, but today there are four, it's really important that it has this kind of photographic memory of its landscape, so that it can be aware of any predators uh, in the vicinity. Whereas they don't have this ability to think ahead and think back in terms of events. So where this goes wrong in training for us is that we assume that the horse knows what he's just done wrong. Even if we uh, think we're being fairly immediate with our punishments, for example, when the horse stops at a show jump and we turn away and hit him with the whip. The fact is he doesn't know what he just did. And the only reason why it make him likely to jump the fence the next time is because he's now in a hyper flight response and of course he'll jump anything that's in front of him. But that doesn't teach him to jump. So these delayed punishments really don't work and sometimes people even use delayed punishments in very unethical ways where they might even, uh, for example, withhold food after a bad dressage test or something like that or withhold water. So these things really need to be stopped. And the way we can lead this is by understanding much more about the horse's mental abilities. And so recognizing that the horse doesn't reason in the same way that humans do is really a big step uh, toward protecting their welfare.